lasts forever. Mm -hmm. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. But the wicked will die. The Lord's enemies are like flowers in a field. They will disappear like smoke. Mm -hmm. And so how does that reconcile with what he was doing with yeah. uh, the people? Well, they weren't innocent. And you did a pretty good job of pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the children were. And the way they're protected is because they were innocent. Yeah, and a friend of mine. Hello, we're live, by the way. Oh, I, didn't know, I didn't know. Good morning. And like it, a friend of mine quoted from um, from Psalm one thirty seven yesterday. That's the one that talks about like how can we how can we how can we play our guitars and sing songs. Um, yeah. Um, Five. Yeah, thanks. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a pagan land? Ah, four. Yeah. Well, then 137 ends with, happy is the one who takes your babies and smashes them against rocks. Wow. <laughs> so, my, so my friend posted the first part of that. Uh, and I just said, yes, yeah, see also this text. <laughs> so, we, so we're talking today. Um, hmm. So we're talking today about uh, like about some pretty challenging um, uh, like ethical, moral concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Of of what we um, of what we talked about this past Sunday, which in part was um, Joshua. Um, I called it the. My teaser was was the genocide of Joshua because I because that's how I think that's how we would certainly look at that yeah um, as this just this completely brutal war action and and what do we do with that yeah. and yeah. and we got we got some questions um, kind of from that so um, we've been doing this for almost four years now it'll be four years wow. Now. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if we did it my first month here, but I think we started pretty pretty quick, pretty after. quick after. Yep. So yep. we've been doing this for almost four years now, and and if you have been with us throughout this time, like this has been a, just a pretty open conversation, like mm -hmm. thirty thousand foot level <laughs> kind of conversation. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these conversations that we have on on Tuesday with the Tuesday Q and A. Um, it's not that we haven't thought about these things um, and it's not always that we haven't talked about them because sometimes we have talked about them right. beforehand but like we like we wrestle through this because um, I'm like I'm going to speak for you I, I think That's we fine. have the same kinds of questions yeah. when we read the Bible we have the same kinds of questions that, that other people have mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Just because, just because this is our our job and our life, um, and I want to study it, and I want to know truth. Yeah, it, yeah. It doesn't mean that we have it all yeah. figured out. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think a lot of times when we've talked about topics like this, um, and maybe a lot of different topics, it maybe it hasn't been as black and white and as satisfying as people might want it to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but like it's interesting. So um, so one of the things that we've been doing over the last couple months here at Westway is we have we've been using these Bible reading plans um, on U version. Yeah. And this week's um, this week's the one the, the the entire reading plan is through the book of Joshua. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, so yesterday, the the video that that was a part of that Bible reading plan was the Bible Project video on Joshua. Yeah. And I really like the way, I like the way they set it up of like when we're reading this, remember that this was something that happened thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Yeah. So, so the way, so when we look at this, we want to be, I think we want to be cautious in bringing like our own, to some degree, we want to be cautious against bringing our own moral standards and our mm -hmm. own moral understanding to bear on something that happened 2,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 years ago. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we can't be concerned about it. Right. 
It's and it doesn't mean that it fits in some way into our time. Right. Um, but to translate what happened then based on the culture that we live in and the surroundings that yeah. we're in would be incorrect. Right. We have to consider what was going on at the yeah. time and the culture that was happening at the time and and the circumstances around that in order to interpret it correctly. Right. So, so as we kind of wrestle through and navigate through this, that just starting off on the front end of that gives me gives me sort of a filter through which I'm going to approach this. Yes. Recognizing that this is something they're talking about something that happened thousands of years ago that like it may not resolve all of my conflict. Yeah. But it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we talked about Joshua. Uh, the people went into Canaan and were, were supposed to lay waste to everyone. And we know they didn't do that mm -hmm. uh, because elsewhere then, like, I really like the way that Joshua video put it. Yeah. Like, how if it says they killed everyone, well, how come they were told not to intermarry? So, I, so obviously, <laughs> there was, God didn't, necessarily mean destroy everyone right right because they well because they didn't do it <laughs> i think he meant it um i th i think he i think he told them this is what you need to do this is how you need to do it but they didn't follow it to the letter yeah um and also there were other times that the instructions gave him that he gave them were a little bit different. Yeah. In in different areas that they went into. Yeah, that's a much better way to put it. Um, so so bottom line, the people were t th so so this is war. Mm -hmm. They are going into another like, and it's not even a country in the way that we think about countries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's so much of this just as kind of some background information. Like they're going to war. They're going to take land, as we talked about going back to Genesis. Um, those people had 600, 650, 700 years to repent of their wicked sin. They didn't. Right. It's judgment. It's, yeah. it's, it's time for judgment. God said, we're going to clean it up. Yeah, God's going to bring judgment upon um, on the people of Canaan. So he did. Yeah. And like you don't have to like the way he did it. I don't have to like the way he did it. <laughs> but he's God. He, like, he just gets, it's kind of like, it's kind of like with my kids. Yeah. Um, my kids didn't always like my rules, and I'm certain. <laughs> oh yeah. That your kids didn't always <laughs> like your right. rules, and they didn't like the way we we disciplined them or different situations. And you know what? They're not in charge. Yeah. And we're not in charge. They also don't have the experience that we have. Right. The insight that we have. Yeah. Um, and and obviously we don't have that like God does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so go in, wipe out everyone. Um, how do like, so, so there are two questions that we got. One of them was, um, somebody asked a question and then they kind of answered it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to spend just a, a minute on a brief moment on this one. Um, they, they asked the question, well, how do you think that affected how do you think that affected the, the 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 soldiers, the Hebrew army, as they're going through and they're killing everyone? How do you think that affected them? Yeah. And then the person responded very quickly with, "I I can't imagine that would have been easy." Yeah, yeah. To to know that as I go through that my my instructions are th that I'm to wipe out everything, man, woman, child. Yeah. And um, and in some instances even the animals yeah um, and 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 <clears throat> I would agree with the individual that made the comment I, it, it would have had to have affected them in some way yeah well and I think we know I mean I think we I think we know that now people who um, people who have fought in wars um, not only for our nation but against our nation um, I, I think now it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. Disorder, yeah. So yeah. someone goes and like, they, you know, I mean, that's just, that's not my experience. You know, I, I have never, I have never had that experience and I don't, um, I don't know how 
you take another person's life and are not affected by that. Yeah, yeah. And yet, we're called to do that still today, sometimes. Yeah, if we're in the military. Yeah, if you're yeah. in the military, you sign up to do that. Yeah. Um, and 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 you know that the way that that you go into that situation is knowing that you are following the instructions. Right. Um, to do something that uh, is needed to be done to enable the freedoms or whatever right. of the people of that country or the or, or even our freedoms here right. in our country. And there was a purpose behind it, even in the military today. I think the purpose behind what God was calling them to do at that time is really important to think about. Yeah, yeah, and and, I, and that is what you talked about is God, like God knows more than we do, mm -hmm. and this is this will kind of lead in to our to our to the next question that we got, like because because when God was telling them all of this, He didn't want. He didn't want these other religions to get mixed in with with the worship of himself. Right. Because yeah. he knew, because God knows, um, the thing that I wrote down when we briefly discussed this, <laughs> I don't know if it was in our elders meeting or our staff meeting yesterday, um, but the kind of a, there are there are words that, that we use in the church. Um, Shane Wood, because I watched a Shane Wood video today, calls them $25 words. So yeah. some $25 words that, that Christians sometimes use. Um, omni. God is, God is omniscient, which means he knows everything. Mm -hmm. God is om, omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. Yeah. God is omnipotent, which means he has all power. Yeah. So in God's omniscience, knowing everything, hey, if you, don't, if you don't wipe these people out, their religion is going to, you're going to mix their religion with the worship of me, and that's not how I want you to worship me. Right. I want right. you to worship me this way. And if you start doing all of these other things, you're not going to be worshiping me correctly. Yeah. You're going to, and you're not, and you're not going to be worshiping me. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so part of that was relig like religiously based. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and religiously based, knowing that we've been told and we've seen example of when we follow God, mm. he protects us, he takes yeah. care of us. When we don't, he, we're on our own. <laughs> right. And he allows the other things to, to creep in and, right. and destroy us, like in the, in the Joshua passage this morning. Yeah. Um, we read of, of um, is it Achan? Yeah. Or Achan, I think, is the way they yeah. said it on the Bible Project. <laughs> and um, how that he did not follow the instructions. In fact, he hid the things that he took um, when, he was, when he was supposed to, they were supposed to destroy it all. And he kept it for himself. Right. And because of that, when they went to battle the next time, they went on their own. And they went out, looked to see whether they could conquer this, this area and decided, yeah, this is going to be an easy one. And um, God said, well, you didn't follow my instructions. Right. And um, so they were overthrown by uh, a not so great army. <laughs> right. So then, so thinking about like the men, women and children piece, the second question that we got really yeah. deals with that. So I'm going to read the question and then we're going to discuss it. Is there an age of reason? What age or stage are children safe for eternity if they are killed on earth without knowing Christ? Killing children sounds horrible, but if they are safe for eternity, isn't it better for them to go to heaven than to grow up on earth and be condemned for eternity? Yeah. So there's, okay, so we're going to answer this in a couple different ways. So, um, so first question, is there an age of reason and how old is it? Well, the answer is yes and I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, I believe there is an age of reason. I think there's an age of reason when a child comes to the point where when they understand that what they're doing is wrong and they're convicted that that's sin, um, that, that it is wrong, they might not understand that it's sin, but but they know that it's that it's against God's teaching, mm -hmm. if you will, which would be sin. 
um, then to me that's the age of accountability and and when that is maybe different yeah based upon the maturity of the child and how they've been taught sometimes yeah, yeah. Um, and and or maybe just the makeup of the child mm -hmm. and uh, I know of, of of some handicapped children who uh, uh, may not ever come to that understanding and reasoning, which is an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, they, they, they aren't able to make decisions on their own and, right. and base it on right and wrong. Yeah, I, I, like, um, I like that you change the phrase to age of accountability because that, that, to me that's more the phrase that, that I'm familiar with. Yeah. Um, and I, and yeah, I think it, I think it is different. And I, I was around, um, there's a church that we were involved in 15, 20 years ago, that there was someone there that, that believed that the age of accountability was 21. Yeah. Because that was the age, <laughs> that was the cutoff in Exodus. Uh -huh. Everyone older than, than tw I think it was 21, everyone yeah. older that, older than 21, 21 and older, I think, is the way you would, said it. Yeah. 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 Would perish, be, and they could not enter the promised land. Yeah. So that yeah. person looked at that text. Interesting. And drew, and, and drew, a, drew, a, drew an objective line and said, <laughs> that's the line. I don't know if I'd agree with that. I, and I, and, and, yeah. And I would, I would say, um, I think that's an interesting proposition yeah. that I completely disagree with. Yeah. Like, I can, I can understand how someone might come to that conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. But I disagree with it. I mean, yeah. I know, um, I mean, just, and this is, this is what, what makes this difficult is, I mean, we believe, well, I believe, I'm not going to, I think you believe that. Like, we believe that, that, that we are sinful. We're, we're made in God's image. We're called very good. And on our own, we're going to choose to sin. Yeah. Is that? Do yeah. I yeah. I would agree with that. Your yeah. Yeah. Us? Somewhere along the line, as as we grow and mature, we bec we come to that point of making choices. Yeah. And and that's part of this accountability thing. Yeah. Um, when we come to the point where we're able to make the choices to do things intentionally, that's the accountability part. We will be held accountable for. Yeah. intentional choices like that yeah and I think you know then, then you get into the next part of of this question killing children sounds horrible but if they're safe for eternity isn't better for them to go home to heaven than to grow up on earth and be condemned for eternity yeah. um, I one of the things that one of the ways that I have resolved this tension as I've as I've read through these things is going back to those three omnis that I mentioned a moment ago. God's um, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. So mm -hmm. all powerful, everywhere, all knowing. Yeah. Um, so he knows how people are going to grow up. But God is also, and I shouldn't say also, because it's not it's not an either or. In addition to those characteristics, God is loving and kind and merciful and he's and he's just yeah yeah and i as i think about this question that that's how i resolve this like god knows what he's doing and if i believe if if i believe that god is loving kind merciful and just then when it comes to children like i'm just going to trust like i think god knows what he's doing and I don't necessarily have to know specifically what that means. Right. Right. Um, yeah. In I fact, mean, do I do I think do I think that children um, when they die do I think that they go to heaven? Um, Yes, and I would really like to think that. And I also know that people are sinful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the way I think about that is, is when Jesus took the little child and stood mm -hmm. him in the midst of them, mm -hmm. he said, unless you become like one of these, you shall not enter the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven. And mm -hmm. it's interesting that he chose a little child in yeah. that moment. Um, and 
that he was talking about faith mm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, 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 I hold on to that is that believing that God has instilled in each of us mm -hmm. that desire yeah. to seek him and to love us yeah. and to love him. Yeah. And a little child has that in them. We see that. Um, having worked with children for many, many, many years. Yeah. Um, just was with a kindergarten class this morning and just watching those children and the thought process that um, they have and the way they do things and the way they reach out and love someone they have no idea who they are, yeah. really. Um, trusting that it's going to be okay. I believe that's what God looks for in all of us. Yeah. And I think, I think when a baby is born, it's born with that innate desire to... Um, to well, it's, it's, born, it's made in God's image. Yeah, made in God's image, um, but with an innate in that desire to love yeah. those that are around it. Yeah, and there's just, like, there's just enough of God's, like, the, the way I often think about this is there's just enough of God's residual image, like there's just enough left over <laughs> that... Um, uh, Ecclesiastes says that God's placed eternity in our hearts. Yes. Like yeah. there's something about mankind that's just enough that like any good that we want to do is that residual just enough left over from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And and this is this is a really I think this is what makes this really difficult is um because our society believes that man is basically good. And I don't think either one of us are saying, well, I know we're not saying that. Right. Because right. I don't think, like, I just have to open my eyes to see that that's not true. Yeah. Um, but there are th there are good things that people do. I think yeah. um, just, and we, ha we, ha we actually talked at length about this a couple weeks ago in the elders meeting. We talked about origin what does original sin mean? Yeah. Um, I think that man is bent towards sin. And I think there's just enough original grace. Um, I think there's an element of original grace in that as well, or general grace. Like when we read through scripture, Jesus talks about how God, God makes the rain fall on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. We would call that, um, we would call that a, a general grace. So, so whether you're a follower of God or not, you get to participate in, in, in a general revelation of God's grace. Mm -hmm. You have the benefit of that. And I think, because bad things happen, we participate in a general, like the realities of the world. I think, I think it's interesting too when you back up to the beginning and you think about Adam and Eve. Um, God placed them in a garden um, that was beautiful mm -hmm. and perfect. And it was when they came to the point of making a choice yeah. that it changed. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I think about a child, mm. we're placed in an environment that should be in a home where we're protected and beautiful and, and in some senses perfect, if you will. Yeah. Until we get to the point where the old devil comes along and tempts us and we make a choice. Right. And then it changes. Well, and how many times in how many times in Scripture have we have we seen just so far where the people are given a choice? Yeah. Adam and Eve, eat anything you want except that. Yeah. They go to that. Yeah. Um, uh, Cain, sin is crouching at the door, and if you're mm -hmm. if you're not careful, it's going to devour you. Mm -hmm. Your choice, Cain, sin. Um, like. Moses gives the people a choice in Deuteronomy 30. Mm -hmm. Follow God. What are you going to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to follow God, and then they don't. Mm -hmm. Joshua. Yeah. Choose who you are going to serve. I love his we're, challenge. We're, we're going to serve God, and then yeah. they don't. And, and he says, but as for me and my house, right. we're going to serve the Lord. Right. And, and so there's the choice on both sides there. Yeah. Right. And we just, we see, like, 
reading through the entire biblical text, we see people who are confronted with a choice <laughs> to do good or to do evil. Peter. And more often than not, <laughs> they just choose evil. Yeah. More often than not, I choose evil. Yeah. More often than not, you, like we just yeah. choose Even evil. Even Peter, who had been hanging out with Christ for three yeah. years, and, and, and Jesus told him, you're going to deny me three times. <laughs> and, and then when it comes to the choice, even though he said, I'll never do that, he still did it. Right. Yeah. So, so what I, getting back to this question, is there an account, is there an age of accountability? Um, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Joe would say yes. We don't know what that age is. The Bible doesn't say it. Right. Um, I, the ability to choose makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And like we and see and this is the thing about things that aren't mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. We can sit here and we can talk about all this stuff all day long. Yeah. And God is the one who's omniscient, all knowing, not Joe and I. Yeah. So our like we can read this, we can read the Bible, and we can we we can come up with what we think is right, but we're not omniscient. And for me, I answer that question resting in um, the reality of God as being kind, loving, merciful, and just. Yeah. And like he gets to make that call. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> my we were we said we were going to talk a little bit about this too, but in Deuteronomy 6, the people are told to love the Lord their God with all their heart, all their soul, soul mm -hmm. and all their strength. Mm -hmm. And then to impress that upon their children. Yeah. So I, th yeah. I think as as parents, we have this role and this responsibility to communicate the gospel to our children. And, and like how many times does it say, in Deuteronomy in particular, in the future, your kids are going to ask this question, why do we do this? Yeah. Why do we do that? Yeah. Why do we say this? And there's always supposed to be an answer. Right. And then, you're, then, you're, then you have the ability and the, the opportunity, that's the word I'm looking for, to say to them, well, this is what God has done. Yeah. This is what God has done. And so when they see these things that remind them of something, that's your opportunity as a parent, as a teacher, um, as a friend, to come alongside them and say, this is what God has done. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, there's the choice. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side of that, God did through, throughout the Old Testament tell them, if you don't do these things, then these things are going to happen. Yeah. And so God is not going back on his word. Yeah. That, that's really important to remember. And, and, the, and you pointed out Sunday morning that the countries that they were going into, the communities that they were going into had forsaken him. Yeah. And so that's justice. Right. Yeah. And, and we have to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think so many times... Um, I tend to look at the way God I, I, t I tend to think that God's or else's in the mm -hmm. Bible do this or else I tend to see those or else's um, more as a consequence and not always necessarily a punishment are there yeah. does God punish his yeah. people? Yes. Yeah. Has God punished me? Yes. Does, yeah. Has God punished you? Yes. Has God punished you? Yes. I but what I see is um these the bad things that happen when we choose disobedience are more consequential. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Than, than 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 a than a punishment. Yeah. And 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 the the consequence is meant to turn you back. Right. And there's always repentance offered. Right. I mean, we, we always deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, a couple, this was about a month ago. This was in mid-January. Um, I was driving behind the monument. I wasn't going the speed limit. And <laughs> I got pulled over. And that's a consequence. Yeah. Like, I got a yeah. ticket. That's a consequence. Yeah. Like, I, and, and the funny thing is, like I'm, I'm driving up that road, and I know, I know this. I've lived here. I know the speed limit is 45, mm -hmm. and it was like I'm, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but I, as I'm driving up the hill, um, 
I looked in the parking lot to see if like that that park ranger law enforcement guy was there, and he wasn't. And I just kept going sixty, <laughs> like I just kept doing it. I topped the hill, start going down the bottom, start going down the hill on the other side, and I see a a black SUV coming at me. And my first thought was, I'm about to get pulled over. And sure enough, the lights came on, and I just pulled right over. And he said, um, he said, oh, I pulled you over because you were going 60 in a 45. And I looked at him, and I said, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, that was a consequence. Like, and that was a willful, yeah. that was a willful choice. And, like, I can't get mad about that. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes we do it without doing it willfully, we find ourselves in the position. Right. I had the same type thing happen right out here by the church one day as I was leaving, and I wasn't paying attention to what how fast I was going. I knew the speed limit, but right. I wasn't paying attention right. to how fast I was going, and my thoughts were on other things. And a good friend of mine who's in law enforcement pulled me over <laughs> and, and said, do you know how fast you were going? And my honest answer was, no, I don't. <laughs> right. I, I don't honestly know. But what I did was against the law and right. there were consequences. Right. I still got pulled over. And so even though in my mind I may have been innocent, there was still a consequence. And right. I think these children in those situations, and we still see it today, are serving consequences based on other circumstances around them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I know that to be true. Yeah, and we're gonna, so we're gonna, this coming Sunday, we're gonna talk about the prophets. And in Ezekiel, which is one of the prophets, we're gonna, which is one of the four prophets we're gonna talk about out of the 80 million in the Bible, we're gonna talk about four of them. Mm -hmm. um, basically, he's like, God told you this was going to happen. Why, like, why are you... Don't cry about it. Like, it's hard. It stinks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't like, oh, I don't have any sympathy for you. Um, maybe. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I might want to retract that statement. Um, like, you knew this was going to happen. God yeah. told you that if you worshipped all of these other gods, you're going to be punished. Mm -hmm. You worship the gods, and now it's time to be punished. Mm -hmm. Like, what... And this is where we were talking about on Sunday. Like, what, how do we want God to respond in that? Yeah. I mean, I would have loved for that for that deputy to give me a warning. I didn't deserve a warning. I deserved a ticket because yeah. I was going. I was violating the speed limit. Yeah. I deserved a ticket. Yeah. And when we think about mankind and and what we deserve from a kind merciful loving and just god mm -hmm. we deserve we deserve punishment mm -hmm. we deserve we yeah. deserve death yeah at the end of the day i don't know if this is a good example of that in in real life today um but i had friends in high school that um one in particular that was killed in a car accident mm -hmm. because he was with other kids and they were drinking but he wasn't mm -hmm. and but because of the alcohol that was involved and the accident that happened um he fell prey to the consequence yeah and uh, we are told in lots of different ways if you drink and drive right it kills right and yet we hear daily almost of examples of of that happening right and it, does it make it right? No. Right. Um, but it but it is there are consequences to our actions and yeah. our choices. Yeah, and that's that's a really good I think that's a good ending point is when we when we read through what we're what we're talking about right now, God is serious about sin. Yeah. Like if we yeah. I think there's a lot of things that we might take away that we might ask questions about and those are and it's fine and it's reasonable to ask those questions again. We, we have the same questions. Um, but as I, as I come away from what I've at least been reading over the, through the Bible over the course of preparing for the seed, for the series, like God's serious about sin. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it matters. And we are like, like here, so here will be a hope. Like, let's, let's flip this for a minute. 
Like someone's got to pay for our sin. And here's the good news. Yeah. His name is Jesus mm -hmm. and he has. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we live in a world where we want, where we want justice. Um, we want to see people pay for, pay for the wrongs they've done. We want to know that people, that someone's going to pay for the wrongs that have been done against us. And here's like, that's just the good news is that Jesus has done that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the sin has been, it's been bought, it's been paid for. Mm -hmm. um, so with all of this death and destruction conversation <laughs> that we're having today, like recognize that Jesus has paid the price for our sin. Yeah. And when I read the Bible, I realize um, the truth about myself, which is I am a terrible sinner. Mm -hmm. And I realize the truth about God. He is a merciful, kind, loving judge mm -hmm. and someone has paid for my sin and his name is Jesus mm -hmm. and I and I I need to remember that more I'm sure um, those of you watching need to remember this more I'm sure you need to remember that more yeah. that Jesus is yeah. is the is the is the paid the paid the penalty for our sin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a very hopeful thing yeah yeah um, so yeah, that's a great blessing. <laughs> so this week we're going to talk about the prophets. Um, again, we're all, we're only going to talk about four prophets this week. Um, do you have a question about that? No, okay. I was just. Are you going to tell us which ones? Uh, let me see if I can remember. Um, Amos, Ezekiel's one. Amos is one. Ezekiel's one. Haggai's one. And then there's one more. And I can't remember what that. Is it Jonah? No, it's not no? Jonah. okay, because yesterday we had you hadn't decided yet. <laughs> <coughs> Let me quickly look at the names of the of prophets. Um, Amos, um, oh Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Yeah. yeah. Amos, Zephaniah, or Amos, Ezekiel, Zephaniah, and Haggai. Um, hmm. that we're gonna talk about. That'll be interesting. So um, I want to encourage you if you are if you're on the Westway group. Um, we post. I posted a link this morning that um, because we're not going to read all of the judges, um, there are some great videos, um, great resources that we have found that will help you prepare for Sunday. So if you go to Westway's Facebook group right now, um, you'll see a link to um, to our resource page pointing you to an overview of the prophets. I think there are six videos you can watch. It should take you about 30 minutes. Mm. Um, just really yeah. paint this picture for you of what we're going to be talking about um, on Sunday. I'm excited. I love the prophets. I read through the Minor Prophets several years ago, uh -huh. and it was there's lots of good stuff there. Oh, yeah. It, it It's hard as a teacher to go so quickly through the Scripture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many nuggets of wisdom right. and right. things to use right. to help us to live our lives. Yeah. 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 So we just commend to you resources um, and encourage you to do that. So thanks for watching. Keep questions coming. Um, what are we going to mention right now media? Right now media. So <laughs> one of the, one of the resources yeah. that, that, that Westway has made available is called right now media. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to make sure I get the name of the movie right or correct, right? Right now, media. Um, one of the movies that, um, one of the resources on Right Now Media is called Free Burma Rangers, and it's about a group of people who, um, who li essentially live and operate in Burma, mm -hmm. and they rescue and, and help people in the midst of that country's civil war. But they also deal, go to Iraq and they go to Syria. And they wrestle with this, like this is a very timely yeah. question that yeah. they wrestle with. Yeah. Um, we, Anna and I watched it, um, Anna and I watched Free Burma Rangers a few weeks ago. And I think, um, like I think I pretty much had tears in my eyes after about <laughs> 10 minutes in. Like I was just sitting there, like watching people deal with what we're talking about right now. Yeah, very powerful. Um, how to how to serve people in the midst of this hardship, um, and it was it was a heavy movie. It was it's a documentary, and it is it is very heavy. Yeah. And but it deals with the realities of what of what we've talked about yeah. today. 
Yeah, yeah. The same the same issues that they dealt with back in the scriptural times, um, those 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 same issues are issues today. Mm -hmm. And um, and this video, this movie, um, really brought that home. Yeah. And the passion of especially one family, one man and his wife and their children, mm -hmm. um, and their desire to reach out to a people. Um, and how that spread to other groups of people. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. so we recommend that. Um, if you want to have access to Right Now Media, reach out to us, um, and we'll make, sure, um, we'll make sure you can get on that. It's free for Westway people. So we love you guys, and we're praying with you, praying for you. Looking forward to Sunday's message, talking about the prophets. Um, yeah. I think that's all we got. Yeah. So have a great rest of your week. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.